Welcome to the Western Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Anna and I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from Muhlenberg College. Take it away. Thank you, Anna. From one Anna to another. Okay. I will go ahead and share my screen. All right, I think I have it on presenter view. Someone could give me a thumbs up. Uh, yes, it's on presenter view. Just if you flip your screen uh, under display settings. Is it now on presenter Looks view? Great. Okay, yeah. thank you. Hi everyone. So my name is Anna Marie Fami and I'm the uh, Regional Associate Director of Admissions for the West Coast at Muhlenberg College. So uh, Muhlenberg, we are a small private liberal arts college in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Allentown is about an hour and a half outside of New York City and about an hour outside of Philadelphia. So you have access to these great and exciting East Coast cities. Um, just two weekends ago, there were students from Muhlenberg who went to go uh, went to New York City to go see Wicked on Broadway. It was 40 bucks for the ticket to the play and that also included the bus ride from the college to the play. So very easy and accessible to get to um, places like New York City and Philly. Um, but Allentown is also not insignificant in size. We're actually the third largest city in Pennsylvania. Um, and the fastest growing city in the state as well. So uh, we are located about 10 minutes away from downtown Allentown. I like downtown Allentown. It's full of really cool restaurants, art museums, concert venues, et cetera. So very thriving downtown scene. Um, and where Muhlenberg College is in the suburban part of the city, surrounded by tree lined streets and old brick homes. As a person, as a SoCal native, I always get very excited when I see brick that I was, I was thinking about the East Coast when I see brick. Um, so you definitely get that uh, East Coast vibe when you're at Muhlenberg. And um, another thing too, that really stood out to me when I visited campus for the first time were our red doors. So if you see behind me in my virtual background, every exterior door on campus is bright red. And that dates back to our founding as a Lutheran school. Red doors serve as a sign of welcome in the Lutheran faith. So even though we were founded as a Lutheran school, we're proud of our religious diversity. About a quarter of our students identify as Jewish, about a quarter identifies Catholic, and the rest other religions are not religious at all. So it's a welcoming place. It's also a welcoming place too for what you want to study, whether you know what that is or whether you don't, or whether you want to be at a place where you want to study different things. About 30% of our students double major, and a lot of our students will also major and minor. Our, we're known for our programs within the visual and performing arts, uh, theater being one of them. Yes, we have musical theater. We also have aerial acrobatics in our dance program. So a great place to be involved in the performing arts, and you do not need to audition to be involved. Uh, it, it, we do our admissions process and not by audition. Um, other popular programs at Muhlenberg, science, we're known for science, especially our pre-med. Um, so our acceptance rate to medical school has been 87% for the last uh, seven years. And uh, we're also known for our politics department. We're also known for our uh, English department and psychology and our business program as well. So whether you want to study the sciences or the arts, maybe a little bit of both, some common double major com uh, combinations that I've seen at Muhlenberg, uh, dance and biology uh, and theater and business. So Muhlenberg is the kind of place where you can pursue what you are interested in uh, and really get, in, get in, uh, involved in integrative learning and crossing the disciplines. We also have some pre-professional programs, uh, education certificate programs. Uh, we have a new Master of Applied Analytics program. That's an accelerated uh, graduate program if you're interested in math, data, data science, computer science. And we also have academic partnerships as well. Uh, a couple of these were partners with, with medical school. So you could apply to medical school, uh, have that partnership uh, during the time of, of being a Muhlenberg student. Um, but we also have some, two, two of these programs are programs that you would apply for as a high school senior. Uh, and these are early admission programs to a dental school and optometry school. Um, we also have a law school and some other programs as well that we're partnered with. So long story short, we care about you when you're here, but we also think about uh, how you could be involved and in, in prepared for a career after Muhlenberg. 
Um, and another thing that students like to do while they're at Muhlenberg is study abroad. So a little more than 50% of our students go abroad. Uh, we have traditional semester long programs. Maybe you wanna do dance in Italy or theater in London. We also have some short term programs. Recently, students have gone to Bangladesh to study climate change, um, but also Senegal to study uh, rising youth political movement. And they actually helped a local rapper film his music video. Um, so a variety of ways you can go abroad, whether it's to you know, more interdisciplinary short term program somewhere or a traditional semester long program. And almost 90% of our students uh, report being employed, attending graduate school, uh, volunteering, or doing something within a year of graduation. A lot of our students are engaged with our career center through different workshops, events, uh, industry site visits to really get a sense of what they want to study and how to be prepared for that and be connected with alumni and family members. We're a small residential campus. So almost all of our students live on campus for all four years. Uh, we're also proud of our food, ranked number one for best college food in Pennsylvania. Variety of student clubs as well, whether you wanna be a part of plant-based advocates or the beekeeping society or different acapella groups or our politically active groups. So there's a variety of things you can get involved in, whether it's performing arts, activism, or a little bit of both. And then to apply to Muhlenberg, uh, we have early decision one, early decision two, and regular decision. Early decision one is right around the corner. We're also on the Common App, and we have been test optional since 1996. Happy to answer any questions you have in the chat. Uh, thank you so much. And I will now turn it over to my next colleague. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Salve Regina University. Hi everyone, my name is Nick Albanese with Salve Regina University, located in the beautiful ocean state of Roland. At Salve, we say that you will learn, lead, and make a difference. So in terms of making a difference, we are founded by the Catholic Sisters of Mercy. And the sisters have given us so many things over the years, but one of my favorites is our mission statement, because the very first line is about inclusivity. They wrote, as a community that welcomes people of all beliefs. And the final line is we work for a world that is harmonious, just, and merciful. So the goal of the Salve education, regardless of your background, is to empower students to make the world around you a little bit better, a little bit more inclusive, a little bit more just and harmonious. The sisters are concerned about many things, but five of the biggest topics um, in society that we want our students to know something about and feel equipped to take on when they graduate is um, environmental justice, uh, immigration reform, nonviolence as a baseline for behavior, anti-racism, and promoting women's rights around the world. We are a small university with just over 2,000 students, but we have over 60 undergraduate programs of study, as well as lots of graduate programs. We have some accelerated options and great dual enrollment partnerships. Uh, we're very well known for our direct entry nursing program, 96% pass rate on the NCLEX, and guaranteed clinical so students will finish on time in four years. Uh, we also have popular majors in chemistry, biology, psychology, um, any form of business, administration of justice. And then we have some unique programs as well. We have a Bachelor of Arts in Dance, and we have a really interesting major called Cultural and Historic Preservation, where students study the built environment. They learn how to protect, advocate, restore um, historic objects, buildings, and even entire neighborhoods. And it makes sense that we have such an emphasis on history because we're located in one of the most uh, historic districts in New England, the Bellevue Avenue Historic District of Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, so our campus is a collection of estates from that neighborhoods, mansions, barns, stables, old carriage houses that we converted into our residence halls and classrooms, along with newer state-of-the-art buildings. So we're right on the cliffs of the Atlantic Ocean. You can walk to the beach um, and we're in a very interesting neighborhood that you can't separate from the campus. It's an open campus and students feel very comfortable getting off campus and not just being surrounded by other 19 year olds all four years. Um, but there are so many things to do on campus. We have 20 division three varsity sports, well known for sailing. We're in the sailing capital of the world. Um, competitive club sports like rugby, uh, over 60 student led organizations and new this year, a number of affinity groups like our female empowerment organization, the Black Student Union. We have the Pell Center for International Relations and Public Policy, which is a think tank formed by an act of Congress. And we bring in speakers from all over the world, thought leaders of our generation that are inspiring our students through their lectures on campus. 
there's always some kind of event going on. I have a photo there of one of our carnivals on campus. Um, and about 85% of our students are not from Rhode Island. So we have students from all over the country and the world. I um, mean, you won't be the only student from the West Coast at Salve. And our, that bottom right photo shows community service. All of our students participate in service work. Um, there's over 60 organizations on the island. So we're really impacting our neighborhood and, and people that we live near in the community. In terms of getting into Salve, most students are between a B plus and an A minus GPA. We are fully test optional for all of majors, including now direct entry nursing. Um, so we're very happy to do a holistic evaluation of the applicant and to understand you in the context of your academic environment. You can apply November 1, and so we are, we are actually still taking some applications for that deadline. We're going to close the application on the 4th, so you still have a couple of days. You don't have to have your transcript or uh, other supporting materials ready. You can just submit your application, and then we can get those in the coming weeks. Um, but otherwise, you can apply January 5 or February 1. Nearly all students at Salve receive a merit scholarship, and new this year, um, all students of color and Latinx identifying students will automatically receive a very generous merit scholarship really on the higher end of our merit awards with the option to receive an enhanced award that covers full tuition. Um, so I'm happy to provide more details about that. I also encourage you to check out salve.edu slash visit so that you can see upcoming um, virtual opportunities to check out our campus as well as in-person tours. We have an open out house coming up on November 7th. Um, and if you'd like to connect with me, you can scan that QR code. I am the admissions counselor for all of the Western states. I actually live in California, so I'm in your time zone, and I'm an alumnus of Salve, so I love to talk about my alma mater. I'm going to post my information in the chat, um, but I will turn it over to our next speaker, and thanks so much for listening to me. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Sacred Heart University. All right, thanks Anna and Nick. Good evening, everybody. My name is Sarah Kolaski. I'm the Regional Director of Admissions for Sacred Heart University. I'm based in Denver, Colorado, so I'm just a time zone away. And if you have any questions or find Sacred Heart on your list down the line, I will be your direct point of contact. Um, brief overview, Sacred Heart is a mid-sized Catholic university. Um, we're just under um, 6,000 students undergrad and about 9,000 total with grad and part-time. We're an hour and a half outside of New York City, near all major airports in the East Coast, um, on the, directly on the train line from Manhattan to Bridgeport, and about two and a half hours to Boston. We're also located in the third most concentrated area of Fortune 500 companies, so internship opportunities are readily available, and all of our majors require at least one internship to graduate. So having those um, at your dis at your disposal in our backyard and being able to work with some of the top companies in your um, undergraduate experience. We're sort of a hybrid of liberal arts meets career education. So while most students do come in undecided, um, we do have over 40 graduate, um, whether accelerated or combined graduate programs for students to choose from. Our most popular major does include a direct entry nursing track, followed by um, a th an accelerated six year doctorate of physical therapy, occupational therapy or athletic training, um, and then business, criminal justice and marketing and cybersecurity are kind of in our top there. But we have over 60 majors to choose from. We actually just added a brand new music program. Um, it has been a minor, but now expanding into a full on major to allow students the opportunity to um, enroll in our new music therapy grad program. So that will be ready for fall of 2023. Um, a couple of unique things about health professions in general, we um, are test optional for all of our programming as well. And we do offer a full semester of study abroad. So students considering that nursing track will have um, a study abroad program set up on our Ireland campus, which has a hospital and would allow students to do their clinicals overseas. Um, we are a Catholic institution, but we did become independent from the church shortly after our founding. We were actually the first laity-led Catholic institution in the country, so really wanting to emphasize um, the student's discretion with their relationship with the faith or their own spirituality. Our campus ministry is run by a priest, rabbi, and imam. 
We do not have religious requirements for students. Um, it's completely at the discretion of what students want to do. Um, I would say the big takeaway from our relationship with the faith is our commitment to community service. We are currently top 10 in the country for our um, community service programs with Habitat for Humanity being our largest student club on campus currently. So really affording students those volunteerism opportunities, whether internationally or nationally, um, and helping students have um, that enhancement on global citizenship. Um, we are growing a lot. We are one of the top 10 fastest growing Catholic universities in the country right now. Um, as I kind of mentioned, we did we do have our accolade, high accolades in our health professions programs, high success rates um, in other areas such as performing arts. Um, we have 28 performing arts groups on campus. Um, our game design program is top 20 in the country currently, and we've had a 99% job placement rate for the last five years. So it's been an exciting time, um, really emphasizing what the modern student needs. We've had a lot of autonomy with both our curriculum and being able to support students in um, their their own journey as we as that higher learning has constantly um, kept changing. In the last six years, we've had 18 new buildings introduced to campus. So that includes new dining halls, new dormitories. Um, three of the five freshman dorms are um, new within the last three to five years. So my incoming classes have the opportunity to live in some of the newest dorms in the country. Um, we also are breaking um, ground on our West Campus, which is GE's former headquarters. It's the top middle photo here, and that is expanding our growth in engineering, um, computer science, cybersecurity. There's an 11,000 square foot maker space here for students, um, especially for my undecided engineers. This is a great opportunity to work with some of the most state-of-the-art facilities um, in, in a smaller space, a small personalized cohort. Um, something that's not featured on this page, we just broke ground this past fall, is our Martiri Family Ice Hockey Arena. We're looking to expand our growth in our Division I ice hockey programs, as well as our club figure skating and club um, synchronized skating programs as well, and that will be done in 2023. And finally, I just want to provide our admissions page. Um, our application is pretty straightforward. We just ask for the common application, a copy of your official high school transcript and a letter of recommendation. Um, students who are interested in Sacred Heart find a fit, whether academically, um, location-wise, or um, have a connection somewhat to the East Coast and are considering the East Coast as a serious option. Um, average GPAs are going to be listed here. We do have a little bit of a higher criteria for our College of Nursing. Um, and again, because it is a direct entry pro program, students must apply by December 15th to be considered for that program. Um, we are test optional. We will continue to be test optional for all of our programs. Um, I highly encourage students, if they have the opportunity to visit campus, to please do so. But um, I'm also available for either an in-person visit if I'm in your area or a virtual opportunity as well. Um, all students are automatically considered for merit scholarships and 93% uh, 93, 93 of our students do receive some semblance of financial aid. So we really do try to support students through every step of the way. We will be offering um, additional considerations for students coming from farther distances um, and um, as well as having the um, continual COVID uh, reconsideration forms in the appeals process. So happy to talk to you more about that. Thanks for, so much for joining today. Um, and that's my time. Thanks so much. Thank you. Next you'll be hearing from the University of Connecticut. Thank you so much. Um, let me just share my screen. Oh, sorry. Wrong one. Let's try this again. There we go. And I'm way ahead. Sorry about that. <laughs> to go before. Okay. Um, so my name is Heather Schrang. I am the admissions officer for the University of Connecticut in Northern California, as well as Washington and Oregon. So I'm excited to be here tonight to tell you a little bit more about the University of Connecticut um, and how it might be a good fit for you. So the first thing I always like to get started with is where exactly we are located. Uh, we're located 
in Storrs, Connecticut. Um, we're about an hour and a half south of Boston and about two and a half hours north of New York City. Uh, so we're also a little bit over an hour from Providence, Rhode Island. So really nicely centrally located um, in the heart of New England, allowing you to access a lot of different locations. We are the flagship university in Connecticut. Our main campus and stores houses just over 19,000 undergraduate students. Uh, we're about 24,000 undergraduate students, including our other campuses, and we're about 30,000 students, including our graduate student population. So we are considered a large institution. Uh, we are also ranked in the top 25 public universities in the country by US News and World Report, and we are a tier one research institution. So definitely for any students who are interested in um, especially science-related majors, that's gonna be really great. It means opportunities for research as early as your freshman year. So definitely a benefit. These are just some images to should give you a little bit of an idea of what campus is like. Um, we are in New England, so we do get all four seasons, including winter, which is always something I like to mention for California students. Um, our stores downtown area is the top middle photo. So that's got shops and restaurants, coffee shops, pharmacy, grocery store, transportation depot, which is where you can hop on a bus to go up to Boston or down to New York on a weekend if you'd like to take advantage of that. As far as academics at UConn, we have over 115 majors as well as over 320 minors and concentrations across our 10 schools and colleges. So there is a lot of opportunity for students who either um, aren't sure what they're looking to study, you can absolutely find it at UConn. And if you do have an idea of where you would like to head as far as your major and career, uh, but maybe you have some other areas of interest, there's a lot of opportunities for interdisciplinary studies. Some of our most popular majors at UConn are business, nursing, engineering, medicine, our college of liberal arts and sciences, Biological sciences and psychological sciences are two our two largest majors as far as number of enrolled students. Um, our business, nursing, engineering, and fine arts are just a little bit more selective programs, so I do like to mention that. But generally, we don't deal with impacted majors. We do have a sixteen to one student to faculty ratio at UConn, so this of course means smaller class sizes. In addition to that, it also does mean that you have access to faculty. So whether that's for research, mentorships, or if you just need help on projects, papers, you'll know you'll be able to uh, get in touch with your professor and get the help that you need. We are a division one university. We have 21 NCAA division one sports at UConn. We are most known for basketball, especially women's basketball. So with that comes a lot of hype, a lot of excitement and a lot of school pride. Students very excited and proud to say that they are a Husky and that they are part of UConn nation. So you can cheer on whatever sport team, sports team that you would like um, at the university and feel that excitement along with your classmates. It is definitely a part of UConn, but it's certainly not the only part of UConn. Um, you can get involved in our over 700 clubs and organizations that range from very special interest to academic, lots of music. We also have 37 intramural club sport teams within that where you can still have a collegiate sport experience. Additionally, uh, there's Greek life included in that. So lots of opportunity there. These are just to give you a little bit of an idea of of campus life, so uh, or events that are on campus. So Uconic Music Festival, which is on the left. Um, you can see our homecoming and homecoming carnival, our one ton Sunday event, Husky Thon, which is an 18 hour dance marathon and Oozball, which is my personal favorite event. And it, it's the uh, nation's largest mud volleyball tournament and takes place on campus every single spring. These are just more images of what campus life is like to show you that there's always something going on, big or small, you'll never be bored and you'll always be able to find something to do. Uh, to apply to the university, we are on the Common App as well as the Coalition App. We this, this is a list of everything we require in order to apply. The SRAR, personal essay, letters of recommendation are not required, but are very strongly encouraged for admission. Uh, we are a test optional institution, so we are test optional for any current juniors and seniors, and then after that we have yet to make it a determination, but uh, confirmed for any current juniors and seniors that you will have the option to submit a test score if you'd like, but it is not required for admission. This is the case for all of our programs, including our selective programs, honors, and merit scholarships. So speaking of merit scholarships, students are automatically considered for merit when they apply. There's no additional application that is required. Same goes for our honors program. 
Our honors program, we take about 525 to 550 students per year. It's a great program for students who are looking for a little bit of an elevated academic experience. So you will be automatically considered for both. We are need blind, so we don't even have access to your financial aid application. We just are awarding you based on your academic merits. As far as deadlines at UConn, we do not have a uh, we do not have early action or early decision. However, we do have a priority consideration deadline of December 1st, which is priority consideration for merit scholarship and honors. It's also the mandatory deadline for any of our four special programs, which are law, medicine, dental medicine, and education. January 15th is the final deadline when all applications must be submitted. February 15th is the deadline for the FAFSA, which um, every student should complete. And then March 1st is when all admissions decisions go out, regardless of when you apply. This is just a link to show you some different options of how you can connect with the university, whether it's for virtual campus tours or on-demand content of different schools and colleges. So I encourage you to check that out. And then this is my contact information. However, I will also drop that into the chat at, um, once I complete, um, which is right now. So that was perfect timing. I appreciate you taking the time to listen. I hope you have a great night and I will be here to answer any questions should you have any. Thank you. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from the University of New Haven. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and I want to apologize in advance. I'm a little bit um, under the weather, a little bit sick. So I do apologize um, for my voice and my sniffles. Um, but let's just get uh, started right now. So um, my name is Michelle Atala. I'm one of the counselors at the University of New Haven. Um, Awesome. So one of the first things that we like to bring up when talking about the university are some of our rankings and recognitions. Um, we were ranked by the Princeton Review as one of the top 387 best colleges um, for the 2022 year. So another consecutive year in a row. Um, we're also ranked um, one of the best colleges by the U.S. News and World Report. Um, so just some rankings that we're really proud to hold. Um, so we did turn 100 last year. So for our 100th birthday, um, we actually founded the Bergami Center for Science, Technology, and Innovation. Um, this is a brand new 40,000 square foot facility. And again, just something that we're really super um, excited to share with our current and incoming students. Um, there's some brand new communication studios in there, um, advanced smart classrooms, and just a lot of maker spaces for you to go in there and work on group projects. So I do want to touch on our location a bit. Um, so we are located in West Haven, Connecticut, just about five miles from New Haven. Um, downtown New Haven is like a live college city. So there's a lot of stuff to do for college students. Um, we're also just about five to 10 minute drive to the beach. So right by Long Island Sound. Um, so a lot of our upperclassmen will, you know, just get houses on the beach or apartments by the beach and just commute onto campus. Um, we are also right in between New York City and Boston. So you can just hop on our shuttle. It'll take you right to the train station and you can get right to New York City in a little over an hour and then Boston in a little bit um, over two hours. So we're in a pretty ideal location. So we have just over 5,000 full-time undergraduate students. So we're a small to medium-sized university. Um, we have over 100 academic uh, majors and programs. So really something for everybody. We also have over 85 minors and certificates. So just something extra that you can tack onto your studies as well as over 35 graduate programs. Our average class size is about 20 students. So you'll never be in you know, a big 200, 300 person lecture hall. You're always gonna have those small class sizes. And then we also have over 150 clubs and organizations on campus. So again, something for everyone. Um, and we make it super easy for you to create your own clubs as well. So I do just wanna talk about this statistic real quick. Um, so 95%, that's our job placement rate. So 95% of our 2019 graduates within six months of graduating either had a job directly in their field of study or went on to graduate school. Um, the significance of this number is that we don't count the students that got a job not related to their major or their field of study. Um, we have over 50 dual degree programs, which is basically a way for you to get entry into your bachelor's and your master's. So you won't need to apply for your master's program. You'll go right into it after your bachelor's and it'll save you about a year um, of studying. So obviously it's going to save you some money as well. Um, and then this is just a quick number. Um, our Career Development Center posts over 2,000 jobs and internships each year. And our Career Development Center is actually ranked number 17 in the nation for career services. So who's a charger? Um, about 30% of our students identify as part of an underrepresented group. Um, not, about 90% of our first year students live on campus and then 65% of our upperclassmen live on campus. And the other 35%, like I said, will either get an apartment by the beach or an off-campus apartment and just make the commute um, onto campus. 
we have 40% uh, of our students come from Connecticut and then 60% from out of state. And then we have 41 different states and 55 foreign countries represented in our student body. So we have a very diverse population of students. 90% um, of our faculty holds a PhD or the highest degree in what they're teaching. Um, so they're giving you knowledge that they know you're going to need once you step out into the field. So these are the five schools where our um, 100 majors and programs are housed in. Um, I won't go into them um, just because of the, the timing. Um, and this is just a short list of where some of our students have gone on for internships as well as jobs. Um, the list is much, much longer. If you search any of the programs on our website, you can see a list specifically for those programs. We also have a study abroad office and we have over 100 study abroad programs. So you really can study just about anywhere in the world. Um, we also have our U New Haven uh, campus over in Prado, Italy. So you can definitely um, take advantage of that and study over in Italy as well. So these are just some visuals on our student life. I talked about our 150 clubs and organizations. Um, we have a dance team, a cheerleading team, a marching band. Um, we have a student run radio station. Um, we have Greek life. I don't think that's represented in, in one of these pictures, but about 20% of our students are in Greek life as well. So that's an opportunity too. Just a little bit on residential life. We have five first year halls for our first year students um, and majority of them. So actually four out of five of them are set up in a suite style. So majority of our, our freshmen are living in suites. We also um, are division two. So we participate in the NCAA um, in the Northeast 10 conference and we have 18 varsity sports. And we, we also have a lot of school spirit. We're only one of two schools in the country to have a blue football field. So it's pretty exciting. Um, I know I only have about a minute left. So I just really want quickly want to get into the application process. So we are part of the Common Application. Um, all we ask for outside of the Common App is a letter of rec and your transcript. Um, we're, we're SAT, ACT optional, so you don't need to submit your test scores. We're also essay optional, so you don't need to submit the essay in the Common App to us. There is a $50 application fee, but um, if you um, join our mailing list, then you'll get emailed um, a fee waiver code, so it'll waive that $50 fee. We also have a bunch of different deadlines. And the one that I personally recommend is the early action deadline of December 15, because it's non-binding. So there's no contract involved um, and you'll get your decision before the new year. So that gives you plenty of time to you know, make a good decision on what school you wanna attend. When you apply, you're automatically considered for a scholarship. It's not a separate application that you need to submit. So our scholarships range from 10 to $28,000 and whatever you're awarded will be rewarded to you every year that you're on campus. I think I just went over six minutes, um, but thank you so much. And I'm gonna pop in my, my email and my number in the chat box. Thank you. Lastly, you'll be hearing from the University of Delaware. Thank you, Anna. And thank you to those that are joining us live and for those that might be seeing this afterwards. My name is Chuck Lydiard and I represent the University of Delaware here. And I'm gonna share my screen and just take a few moments to give you a little bit more insight about the University of Delaware. Uh, this is Memorial Hall. It really does represent uh, the East Coast classic style that many of our schools that are here on this uh, uh, webinar really do represent. You know, a lot of the Georgian architecture, the white columns, uh, wide open green space. Uh, the city of Newark was built around our college in 1743, and it really does embody quite a college town atmosphere. Uh, we're located in Newark, Delaware. I'll show you the map in a moment, but as you can see, there's a large wide open green space. It really does encompass a large a quad that we call the green uh, as kind of the hub and center of campus life at the University of Delaware. Uh, and our location here, just like everyone here, uh, it's really uh, convenient to a lot of the uh, amenities and a lot of the attractions that many are looking for on the East Coast. Uh, we're a 45 minute drive from Philadelphia. Uh, Newark, Delaware is just south of Wilmington, which Wilmington is kind of like the financial hub of the state of Delaware. Uh, we have the lowest corporate tax laws at any other state in the nation. So many Fortune 500 uh, global companies do incorporate and actually have a physical presence in Wilmington because just like our university, they see the location of uh, Wilmington and close by New York, Delaware, a very strategic location. You're close to Washington, D.C., close to Baltimore, the International Airport in Philadelphia. And just two hours away by train, you have one of the largest global economies in the world, New York City, also really close to the Atlantic Ocean. So it really is a great location. Uh, but what is the University of Delaware? We're at the flagship tier one research school in the state of Delaware. Uh, we have just under 25,000 total students. 
but 75% or just under 18,000 are undergraduates. So if you're looking at other flagship tier one schools in other states, you might actually find us a little bit smaller. And considering most, uh, most of our students are undergraduates, being able to apply your um, kind of your knowledge that you gain in the classroom outside in really meaningful experiences, whether it be shadowing a graduate student professor or performing research or internships, they are reserved and really uh, are utilized by our undergraduate students. Lastly, 70% of our total students are not from the state of Delaware. Predominantly, they're coming from Chicago Base East, but we have a huge presence from West Coast students, specifically from California and up along the coast. One thing I think that distinguishes us between other schools that might be close by is we have a really vibrant Main Street that is really intersecting our large quad called the Green Again. Uh, 80 different unique boutiques, restaurants, and shops that are independent of our school are within a 10-minute walk from the center of our campus. There's no sales tax in the state of Delaware, so considering most students go off campus at least once or twice a week, wherever they go to college, at least for your four-year experience at Delaware here, you do save a little bit of money from our tax laws. But all of these boutiques, uh, restaurants, and shops are unique to our school, unique to our town, and so it really does make it for a special um, experience at the University of Delaware. And just like any other major flagship university, we do have a lot of different majors and minors to choose from. Over 155 different majors are available at the University of Delaware. And the way our college is broken down is between eight different colleges. You can directly apply into any of these majors, but 20% actually come in each year as university study students. And that means essentially they have multiple interests or they just don't wanna fully commit yet. So they come in, they go through our liberal arts curriculum, and they're advised by one of eight wonderful advisors dedicated for university studies students. Uh, and it could be one semester or maybe four. At the end of the sophomore year, we do ask that these students who are in university studies do transition into a major. But your unique blend of the humanities and sciences, uh, some of our more competitive majors that might be on the higher end of our profile uh, tend to be nursing, chemical, and biomedical engineering. And we're the number one physical therapy school in the nation, so sports health and kinesiology. But excellent in criminal justice, education, uh, psychology. We have the College of Earth, Ocean, and Environment for Marine Biology and Public Policy, uh, the Biden Institute for uh, the Biden School of Public Policy as well, and we have a great College of Agricultural and Natural Resources, but a lot of students here on the West Coast really like our business college too. We do have many different living learning communities to really make uh, kind of a, a first year class of 4,400 students that we tend to get for an incoming class each year, make it a little smaller. And the Honors College tends to be one of the most popular ones where we take 600 students out of that first year class and they are involved in a living learning community within the first year village. They have classes that only see 25 students. They have amazing mentorship opportunities from uh, upper division honors students and wonderful career and academic advising in addition to what is available in their major. But we are proud to say that we were the very first college university to offer a study abroad program. Uh, we've been doing this for nearly 100 years and it's really been a part of our DNA and we offer over 100 plus programs going to 40 different countries currently, but that number always continues to grow based on the interests of our current students. For those that are looking to apply this year at the University of Delaware, we're happy to say we're test optional for the next two years, actually, both for admission and for merit-based scholarship. We do require the essay of either the coalition or the common application. We do require also the self-reported academic record. Uh, in addition to what you might put on the Common App Coalition, you do have to self-report your grades uh, in the SRA or in those account. And just one school counselor letter or the school report, but you could also send in other letters of recommendation as well. And as I finish up today, I wanna to thank you again for being here. I wanna let you know that at the University of Delaware, we sponsor the number one ranked high school youth entrepreneurship competition in the United States. It's called the Diamond Challenge. It's a global venture concept competition and you don't have to go to the University of Delaware or apply to, to participate. So check out diamondchallenge.org if you're interested. And this is my contact information. I'm also gonna put it in the chat box. I'm gonna turn it over to Anna, our facilitator. And I again, appreciate you being here. Thank you. So we have a few minutes left and I'd just like to invite everyone back on for a round of Q&A. Um, so in the same order that you presented in, if everyone could share um, what advice you would give someone going through the college search process. All right, I think I'm first. 
Um, there's a, a lot of, I think, pieces of advice that I could give, but one that I is specific that I like to focus on is you, you probably get a lot of emails. Uh, if you haven't yet, you will soon. Um, figure out some sort of like organization structure for the emails, whether it's folders or multiple email addresses. Um, so it, it's a small thing, but if you think about just like keeping track of what emails are important versus maybe ones that aren't, colleges you're looking at, um, try to think of a way to stay organized. Yes, totally agree about staying organized. I think kind of going off the email point, a lot of students wonder, well, should I be opening every single email that I receive? You know, I want to show my interest, but I'm getting so many. Um, so I suggest having a list. Um, you know, you can have the big list, maybe in spreadsheet form, and then a separate tab for the colleges that you're applying to. And once you know where you're applying, those are all the schools where you definitely want to make sure you're reading those emails, trying to connect with your admissions counselor um, so that you're not missing out on any special opportunities. Yeah, great thoughts. Um, my piece of advice probably bookends um, the last two pieces where um, you see that we're counselors first. A lot of universities have made the um, conscious decision to have specific counselors in your area, especially with California. Um, so if you're no longer interested in our school, kindly unsubscribe. We really want to do the due diligence on our end and help you find fit. Um, we're not going to be offended if you no longer are interested because um, we know we want you to be happy for first and foremost. So just just simply reach out, let us know what you're doing. And um, it'll also help with all those emails at the end of the year. Um, kind of on the same note as what Sarah just said, um, utilize the financial aid officers that um, are in the region in which you live. Um, so I think that's pretty much all of us here tonight. I don't think anyone said they were covering. If I did, I missed it. Um, but we are here to help. That's what our job is. That's what we love to do. So don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Um, use us because we are the best, one of the best resources you're going to have available to you to answer your, answer questions about the university um, or just in general about admissions. So that would be my piece of advice. Um, I think I'm next. Uh, so my piece of advice would definitely be to, you know, just pick your top colleges, whether it's top three, top four, um, visit the campus because, you know, it's one thing to see, see the campus online, take a virtual tour or go to like a virtual info session, but it's another thing to actually like step foot on the campus, look around and, you know, see if, if you like it, see if you can honestly just see yourself living there for, for, you know, those four years. Um, so my advice is definitely to just try to do those, those campus visits and tours. Okay, I'm gonna kind of go a little different direction because it's coming upon the Thanksgiving holiday. Whether you're a senior or junior, most likely if you have a family gathering, you're gonna have someone in your family that's gonna be asking you, what are you doing for college? What are you applying to? Have you done your essays? What this, what'd you get on these scores? You know what? You can kindly smile if you don't wanna share any that information and say, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I am applying to a lot of schools that I really am proud of. And I, at this time here, I'm just kind of still working on the process. I'll update you later. It's, you know, you have a lot going on. You're know, coming back after the, you know, one different phase of the pandemic. Um, there's a lot to do in school. There's a lot to do to apply to college. You know, it's okay to own your college process. And you can let anyone who you want in that process just because they're related to you or they might be a friend or relative, you don't have to answer really to anyone. Hopefully to your parents, you're keeping that open though. Great, well, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, thank you to all of our presenters. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We um, also wanna let you know that this session was recorded and will be available um, with all of the other sessions recordings at strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. So thanks again, everyone. Have a good rest of your evening. Bye.